You know what I find astonishing? What? You heard about another lie from George Santos, the Congress person? Okay. Can you believe a lying congressman? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Just- Hey, welcome back yeah. to our stupid Rex. It's so Corbin. What a shock. Politicians are lying. Link false It's Twitter. revelatory, I say. Revelatory! Twitter for juicy content. Thanks to Patreon for following the Twitter account. Subscribe to the like button. Today, we have a video. This is from Asian Boss. Asian Boss? We've seen some videos from them before. This is being a top 1% student in India. So these are street interviews, talking to students about certain... Um, their their college experience being uh, getting into a top 1% school, the challenges, right. the right. different stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a good channel, but also didn't we? Did they do something where they were talking to people both in India and Pakistan? Is that that same maybe channel? Might be a while back. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we've done one or two videos from this channel. Yeah. Here we go. Hey, bosses! It's Kay from Asian Boss. Did you know that some universities in Asia are even harder to get into? Yes. Than Stanford or Harvard. It's not surprising. Yes. The Institute of Technology of Bombay. For example, has an acceptance rate of just 1.57 percent for their undergraduate and that's not a lot. program in 2021, according to their website. We've already spoken to some of the top students from Japan, Korea, and the Philippines, but this time we're curious to hear from students at one of the most prestigious institutes in India. How worried are they about their future? Our Asian Boss reporter went to the IIT Bombay campus to find out. What's your major, and which university are you attending? My major is in computer science and engineering and I am attending IIT Bombay. I am doing civil engineering at IIT Bombay. Metallurgical engineering and material science. My major is applied statistics. I am in the department of chemical engineering at IIT Bombay. How prestigious is this university in India? So basically there are 23 IITs. So uh, basically all the IITs are quite prestigious. But among that uh, IIT Bombay is ranked, uh, uh, I guess first or second, second in the overall India. And uh, the world ranking is about 172. IIT Bombay is, an, is a technical institute and it is known for its excellence in various technical fields. The ex-CEO CEO of Twitter was from IIT Bombay. The founder of Ola is from IIT Bombay. And like this, we have many of the uh, alums which, ha- which are excelling in their fields. Everyone in the country wants to study at IIT Bombay. So yeah, it's, it's really tough because the number of applicants are really high. And the seats are very less, so it it's gets really tough. The first entrance exam, J mains. So there are around uh, 1.5 million people sitting for the examination. Woo! And maybe a 2 million at times. But the finally, the number of people getting into IITs is quite low. It's around uh, wow. 10,000 out of 2 million. The country. 10, wow. 000, hardly. And that's all the IITs, not the seven major ones. So, yeah, basically 1.5 million to 1,000, uh, 10,000. So that's quite a low ratio there. Uh, the next level is the J advanced examination. I guess uh, it is the one of the toughest examination in the world. I guess it is ranked third or fourth in the world uh, in level of toughness. How hard was it for you to get into IIT Bombay? It was really difficult to get into IIT Bombay. First, you need to uh, join a good coaching for it. Then they have their proper schedules. And like um, from every Monday to Saturday, they have classes. And on Sunday, you will have test. So in entire two years, you will not get a break at all. And you really need to um, work very, very hard for it to achieve this dream. If I was a bit more serious than I was in my uh, 11th and 12th days, I would have excelled much more. It's easy to get into an IIT, but you need to maintain maintain a distance from the distractions which are there in class 11th and 12th. Most of the students uh, get indulged in various things which are not supposed to be done in your uh, 16, 17, 18 years of age. So it's uh, quite easy. You just need to have discipline, consistency, and that's it. I always like studying. So um, when I went for preparing for IT for entrance exams, I actually just wanted to learn and study further. I did put a lot of effort and hard work, but it didn't feel like it at that time. How many hours uh, did you have to study for the entrance exam? Uh, five hours of coaching. And then apart from that, 
whatever time you get you study like 5 to 6 hours self study so including the coaching times and my own self study maybe 12 hours a day i used to invest <laughs> i would say <laughs> around 5 to 6 hours of coaching and then for 3 4 hours of self study sounds like my hell every day probably many people like they used to study 14 to 15 hours but i'm not that of a guy i used to study at max 7 hours so basically uh, for preparing this exam i first concentrated on myself how i can develop myself well just i ever study was like 10 minutes <laughs> in my routine when people around you found that you've got an admission into iit what were their reactions for those who know what iit is they treated us like uh, we have done some uh, out of the world thing they were not first of all they were not able to digest that i did this because i was not a very good student from the beginning of class 11th and 12th so they start to behave differently they give you a lot of respect and they think that you're really bright sometimes it gets weird <laughs> how does that make you feel that's weird <laughs> the first people who got to know about this were my family and my close friends and yeah they saw me studying day and night i was stunned myself that i got this good rank because like my exam did not went really well i got late into the entrance exam oh, when no. i saw my result i called my best friend she didn't picked up uh, my phone for a while then i was calling 10 times okay see dude i got i got where i want to be i was seeing my family faces like how they happy were for me like it's quite a combination of a hard work of me and my family we show gratitude to so many gods and yeah that kind of thing happened so it was quite memorable for me well for me it was a bit different from everyone else i'll say so most of my cousins are from here too they are graduates from here too wow so it wasn't really that big. so it was expected of them so i could have done better so that <sighs> most of the people said that's how it was so nothing new for them not everyone but some do differentiate us like some kind of genius we are but honestly it isn't that way it isn't that way so i'll say everyone is good at something or the other that's very true so we are might be a bit better absolutely everybody's really good at something again, uh, it's only academics like you might be good at something else right so we aren't exactly geniuses so apparently the gender ratio at iits is 80% male and 20% female oh. do you think that's right yeah since uh, like that is factually correct as well apart from my general observation because uh, recently the supernumerary seats were uh, raised to 21% which is the bar why do you think the gender ratio gap is so wide so in many parts of the country still in typical households uh, yeah gender bias, gender bias the boys are encouraged the girls are not a girl and a boy around the same age and they have to send someone uh, absolutely uh, away from home to study I mean, in parts of the country, people would prefer to send the boy. Uh, also, the like um, engineering is not considered a field for girls. Uh, it's mostly preferred right. A lot, for men, a lot of girls probably don't want to go into it. That's not true. You come here and you see that when you actually study here, you see that it's not true. What did you say are the most popular jobs? when people pass out from iit or any other big institutes at the moment in the country the cool jobs over here barista are basically tech jobs yeah. software engineering profile or the data scientist profile youtuber learned, yeah learned, uber drivers your quants consulting jobs many people join the software companies software development companies yeah it's quite common here to be in uh, google microsoft and also the good finance we have a friend uh, who works for google company also approach uh, here as per Probably the trend, many of them are starting with the startup so they don't join a company right student from one of the top indian universities are you worried about getting a job in future um well i'm not exactly a job person so i like it more to be a maybe a freelancer or stuff like work that work for yourself I, yeah be an independent that's more like my kind of thing not really because like uh, the placements over here are very good then my last university we need to wait for like 2 3 months for even half of the people to get placed So it was a, a completely different experience to see my seniors getting placed into numerous companies. Despite recession, even the bottom of the class will get a placement. It's not much of a deal. It's just that you need to focus on where you want to be. I have heard this from a lot of seniors, from a lot of people here, and if you are from IIT, you will get a job, or you will do something or the other. You will not sit idle. So I mean. Uh, 
it's not like I'm worried to get a job. So the IT label makes you stand out. People might say that once you make it into a top Indian institution, you're set for life. How accurate would you say that statement is? That's not completely accurate because even when you come here, there's a fierce competition and you have to work hard and you still have to put a lot of effort. It's not like your uh, efforts end when you enter IIT. Right. It may not always be true. Uh, one thing is IIT gives a lot of exposure because I have seen my friends who have completely changed their field. Like they have nothing to do with engineering or nothing to do with anything technical. Mm. They say this is my passion and I am going in that sense. So life is not set, life is full of obstacles. In future also, I have also seen people who got a job and lost them. So things are unpredictable here also, but because the uh, resources are nice, the probability of things working out is more here. I think owing to the uh, recent mass hiring and then mass firing, and added to that, the recession and all going around. I think at this point of time, it is pretty competitive. Like, um, pretty competitive and pretty scary as well, because essentially no one has job security. So you might have heard that um, a lot of IITians are unemployed or they're, they're doing non-engineering jobs and stuff like that. So I think one major reason for that is the competitiveness of the job market. It's not like, the IIT and TAG brings you everything. There are a lot of other things, other skills that you need to build to get a particular kind of job. Most of the people who expect quite high paying jobs, they somehow take it up in foreign countries. We can't actually blame them. So yes, India doesn't exactly have much of job opportunities for the top class which are highly graduate and highly skilled. So that's why they go to foreign countries, I guess. Would you consider going abroad to find a job after passing out IIT? Yes, I will. Uh, right now, that's not my plan. Mostly because of family and I don't want to leave my family right now. For me personally, I'm predetermined. I would work for my country itself. I may try for the short term period, but I won't be uh, getting settled in foreign countries. Uh, like I want to work my, for my country itself and want to contribute if, in its growth. If you see from the perspective of the country, then it's, yeah, it's brain drain is definitely a thing which we which the country is facing a lot of highly skilled individuals are going for us and europe to pursue their dreams but if you see from the perspective of the stakeholder who are students who have worked their entire life it's like they really start from their 10th grade so they are seven eight year into the process so definitely they want to make a hell lot of money so yeah they will look for the jobs which pay them really well get the life they want to have. India uh, still needs to ha grow in the sector where uh, highly skilled people can showcase their talent. What India needs to do is they need to increase what uh, the amount of money they are giving and uh, what, uh, what kind of facilities they provide. If India will provide them opportunities, definitely they will work here. If you could go back in time, would you still have gone to college or pursued another path? Knowing what I know now, if I go back in time, I think I would have pursued something a bit different. Mm. Because uh, when I was a kid, I didn't know. I didn't know much about life, anything that's out there, the, about the world. Now I know some things. So I would apply that and I would certainly pursue a different path. Huh. Can you tell us what it would be like? I always like to draw. I think... It would be related to that. Do so it. You would have uh, wanted to do something you're very passionate about. Yeah, something I'm very passionate about. With the many resources you can find online these days, do you think it's still worth going to college in 2023? Depends. Yes. Very honestly, it depends. Yes. Yeah, of course. Having depends on what you want to do. Online, I've been handed online uh, resources to study and whatever. I feel going to college is very, very important. Studying from a teacher who's standing in front of you, who's able to gauge your expressions and see if you've been able to understand. Oh, I, I much prefer in-person class. Important and yeah. very helpful. It legit helps you grasp things better. 
and make more sense out of things. Sure. So college is not just about studies. Right. College is much more more than that. It's about personal about development. About sex development. and drugs. That's right. You take part in. Yes, it is worth going to college. Watch yeah. Animal House. It's That's what you go to college for. I was an average student and I came to IIT. I saw various things. I explored various things. So now I have a clear idea of what I have to do in my life. If you have some idea or you have that specific talent uh, that you can... Uh, counter everyone else and you can do something of your own so you do not need to go to college so it is preferred to go in college but it's not mandatory you can excel as well without going to college yep great video it's, it's about what i've heard yeah about from the um, competitiveness and the amount of importance yeah. indians and indian households put on education yeah um, and getting into and a college, you obviously see the pressures of it all and yeah. how it affects people. Yeah, um, which is you know, the question is: is college still necessary? I mean, it just depends on what you're. It, it depends. If you want to be a doctor, obviously, right? You, <laughs> if you want to be an engineer, obviously, you obviously. need college. Of course, yes, if, you do. Um, I'm always a proponent of pursue your passion. Yes, whatever that passion is, do what you do. Do the thing you want to do. A doctor, engineer, whatever. Um, but also, if you want to be an artist, do it. And you may have to do things you don't like to do yeah. to get to the place where you can be doing the thing you're passionate but about. Your, your life is short, man. Do life is short. And I, I forgot his name. He's a really great motivational speaker who consistently does personal development things for, for people in terms of career. I remember him speaking at, I think it was a TED Talk or something of that nature, and he was telling CEOs, stop telling your employees to, to work the way you do. It's not their company, it's your company. Exactly. And the other thing he said recently was this. He said, I know people who make $45,000 a year, they're living within their means, they save up for two vacations a year, and they're extraordinarily happy people. And I know other people who have hundreds of millions of dollars and they're miserable and hate what they're doing. We need to start redefining what it means to be wealthy. And, and I, I've, I've said that to Indrani over and over and over again. Contrary to what it says about my net worth on the internet, <laughs> which I'm nowhere remotely <laughs> close to being anywhere in the conversation of being a millionaire. Not even six <laughs> figures, friends. <laughs> if you want to be honest about that. And it, that's not the point because the quality of life that I have is better. That I'm so much happier than so many people who make 25, 30 times what I make. Yeah. And so I loved – some people go to college and then they get there and they realize after three years, that's actually not what I want. I thought that was what I wanted to do, but actually that's not what I want to do. Yep. Or they do both like the guy from Hangover who is a doctor, still practicing – but he's a stand-up comic and movie actor. Um, the, the, do, the boss makes a dollar. I make a dime. That's why I poop on company time. Nice. <laughs> you, ever, you ever heard that? Never heard that. <laughs> no. I've always been a big proponent of what you, you said about, you know, stopping expecting your employees to work as like you work. No, not, it's ridiculous. I always hated when companies say, we're a family. I'm like, no, no you, we're not. You fucking pay me. Exactly. And I work. Exactly. This is and not a family. I've always been this way. Like my, um, I've never had an issue with taking my work home with me. Um, obviously acting's different, obviously. That's a whole other, yeah, it's different. It's very, not very a different. normal job. No. But like a normal job of like, I, you know, looking at emails, thinking about stuff. I've always been able to shut it off immediately. Absolutely. And then do Leave what I need office. to do and then come back and, and work and work really, uh, work hard and excel at what I do everywhere. Every like normal job, Starbucks or whatever. I've always been able to get up to management without really even trying. Right. Because I, 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 I don't. I'm just, I if I learn to do something, it's probably my ADD brain. If I learn to do something, I could do it probably better than anybody else can do this job. But also... I don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that, I don't care about your company. You're paying me. <laughs> how did your parents address with you, whether it was directly or indirectly, expectations or lack thereof about college for you? Um, they always wanted me to go, but they also, they, they knew me growing up. And right. They, they knew what kind of student I am and how I literally always hated school. Right. And so luckily I was on the GI Bill because my dad mm. and that and, and so I essentially got paid to go to college because they paid you housing and they paid for all your books. And, right. And so I kind of got a 
a free ride, a free ride yeah. for, for a while. Yeah. So that's the only reason I actually went to college. because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. somebody paid me. Yeah. Uh, or else just I'm, I'm not a good student. My ADD just doesn't uh, ADHD does not agree with college. Yeah. It doesn't interest me. Um, and, you know, it's whatever it's, you know, it's what it is. But they I think all my other my brother got a degree. It was a musical theater. So it's basically not a degree. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, my youngest two brothers. My my stepbrother, who's three years younger than I am, dropped out six months before he got his degree, which I was like, you're a fucking... Wow, you're why a, not just finish out the six months? You're a fucking idiot. Uh, just finish it out yeah. and then do what you want to do. Seriously. You're already that close. You're that close. Even if you hate it, just um, do the six months. Um, but he's now a small EA, so he's doing what he loves. Good. So that's great. And then my youngest brother is the smartest of all. He's getting like a criminal engineering degree or something like that he's yeah. the smartest he's the youngest yeah yeah uh, yeah so he's but he he's actually always been kind of interested in you know actual school and stuff like that mm -hmm. where the the rest of us were always a little more artistic in our in our, yeah. in our brains yeah 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 so luckily my parents were very kind and just they kind of just let their kids do what they want to do yeah obviously As when i moved mine. out i was responsible for myself right my parents weren't paying me yep or uh, it paid for like i had to pay for my phone bill my all my bills right were my responsibility if i yeah. want to do what i want to do but they did pay for college if i wanted it obviously luckily the gi bill was there my youngest brother he's almost done with his his four years bachelor yeah so they're paying for that but once the four years is up if he needs more that's his responsibility. That, that's great. Um, and so I think they paid my oldest brother, got a little bit of the GI Bill as well for my dad because he was it's a, a thing if you were active well, duty. Or and that's the other thing that I don't understand at all, and I'm sure it's better in India than it is in the United States, is cost of college for kids. Obviously, yeah. everyone's going to get free rides if you're at the top of the class in a lot of disciplines, yeah. irrespective of what it is. But as I'm sure you know, even if you don't live here, um, the cost of, a, of an education in America is as ridiculous as the cost of health care. Yeah. I mean, people go into six figures, sometimes seven figures worth of debt yeah. in the pursuit of a college degree. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's insane. And obviously we know the, the pressures that are in Indian households oh, it's are totally unlike different. anything else. Yeah, irrespective of engineering. It's just the pressures to and go to college. It's also like part of your status. Yes. Just like if you don't speak English. Yes. You know, it's you're, it's going to affect huge. where you can go. Which is something, obviously, we as Americans are very privileged in the fact that we don't have to think about that. No. Unfortunately, the really way the don't. world is, everybody kind of speaks English because they know the Americans won't. It, and this is where the money is. Yeah. It just it's just it's, happens to be that way. It's just un, it's an, it's an unfortunate reality. I wish we, we had a little more, um, you know, uh, even though Spanish is probably the second most learned language here, obviously. Yeah. But it's still not like a thing that... In India, everybody knows three languages. No, virtually everywhere else in the world, people know two, three, four languages. It's a it's, just, it's, a, it's a common denominator other than in America. And that's because, sadly, we've too often America thinks there's nothing else more important than America. Yeah. Yeah. It's an, it's but a, that was a great video. Great video. It's always interesting to see actual people going through it. Yep. And they're, uh, I'm sure some of these are stupid babies, I hope. Yeah, if um, you are, say hi. Let us know. Um, I always and wonder. when you have to study, make sure you've got our stupid reactions on. It'll help. It doesn't just help the algorithm. It helps your grades. You're like, mm, oh, yes. Yeah. I can't be that stupid. I need to study harder. That's right. <laughs> I promise you the answer to three-fourths of the questions you're asked will be marked correctly if you just fill in the blank with Shah Rukh Khan. If you answer C for everyone, you're bound to get at least a third of them right. And then when you hand your paper in, just look at your instructor and say, that's ben juicy Chuck. content. Oh. No. That's juicy ben content. Chuck. Anyways, great yeah, video. Instructors like to be called Ben Shud. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Let us know what other videos we can react to down below. Just